All right, let's keep moving on. So there are two deals or two things that we're going to talk about when we get into lending. Now, it's not on the overhead, and it's not in your book, but I want you to write this in because I want to explain something. Here are two other words that most of the common public confuse or interchange, and you guys need to understand they are different people. The first one is this word called a lender. A lender is the person who actually puts their hand in their money, puts their hand in their money, puts their hand in their pocket and pulls out the money. As opposed to a mortgage broker. There's that word again, broker. A mortgage broker is exactly what we do as real estate brokers only they bring together buyers and sellers of money. Real estate broker. Follow me here for a minute. Is it possible for a buyer of a house to walk right up to the seller of a house and go, hey, I'll buy it from you, and they close the deal? Yes. If that seller says no, he then goes to the house next door. Hey, you want to sell your house? No, then he goes next door. Spends a whole bunch of time doing that. Or he could call a real estate broker and say, I want a three-bedroom, two-bath house, 1,500 square feet on a ranch, and you go look for it. I'm going to go back to work and do what I do, and you call me when you get a bunch of houses, and we'll go look at those. That's how a real estate broker works. Mortgage broker or a borrower of money can do the same thing. The borrower of money could walk into Chase and go, hey, loan me money. No. Okay, walk across the street to Nat City. Hey, loan me money. No. Okay, I'll let me drive down the road. Or he can go to a mortgage broker, give all of his information to a mortgage broker, who then will have connections with lenders, and based on his credit score, his down payment, his debt-to-income ratio, the LTV he wants. He could find four or five, and then he'll call his client and go, hey, look, I got four or five lenders. Let's talk about them. So the mortgage broker is the exact same thing as a real estate broker, hence the word broker. He's just brokering money or we're brokering real estate. So understand that a lender and a mortgage broker are two different people. The lender is the money dude. The broker is the guy that finds them and connects them to the borrower, okay? A lot of times you hear them called direct lending and indirect. Direct would be with the lender, where the lender deals with the buyer directly. Indirect would be through this mortgage broker person to the other. Now, what they're going to get when they borrow the money, the first thing they're going to sign is this thing called an IOU or a note or a financing vehicle. All right? This note or promissory note is nothing more than a real big fancy IOU. All right? It says, the lender is going to give me $100,000. And I am going to take that 100000 and use it to buy a house. Now, sidebar for a second. How does the lender know that the asset is worth 100000 that they're going to pledge? What? The appraisal, that's exactly what the appraisal does. All right, think of that. So who does the appraiser work for? The lender doesn't work for the buyer, paid for by the buyer, helps the buyer, but works for the lender. 
to protect the lender's interest. That's the third thing they're going to check for on a house when you borrow, when you try and buy a house. Is it worth the money I'm loaning you? And we're going to do that by hiring this educated guy called an appraiser who's going to go out and do his appraisal work, come back to me and go, yeah, that, that house is worth a hundred grand. Okay, now I know that I'm pretty safe. So when I loan the money as the lender, this person is going to sign a note or an IOU. This note is now worth a hundred thousand dollars. But what really gives value to this note is this thing called an interest rate. The interest rate. The interest rate is the amount of money that you pay to borrow someone else's money. If you had a hundred grand laying around, you could go buy the house cash. No law says you have to, can't. But I don't have a hundred grand, so I'm going to borrow somebody else's hundred grand. And for that, I've got to pay them interest on that hundred grand. That's what gives this IOU value. Because the one that you see that I'm holding in my hand, and if you're at home, you can't see this, but just imagine all it says is, I borrowed a hundred grand at 5.33% interest. When I made this, that was a big number. Now it's not too far away. And I promise that I'm going to pay back that 100000 plus the interest over the next 360 payments, which is 30 years. But look how much I'm going to pay back, and this is the reason I picked 533. I pay back over 30 years a total of 200 grand. I only borrowed 100, but I pay back 200. That's where banks come in. That's why they do this. So this note is negotiable. I can sell it, trade it, do anything I want with it, because as a bank, I don't want 200,000 over the next 30 years. I want my money back now. All right? So interest rate is the money that you pay to borrow money. That's it. If you pay charge too much interest rate, it's called loan sharking. I mean, a usury. Usury is the illegal charging of too much interest. I think in Indiana, it's like 31% is the limit. Yeah. Yeah. Those check cashing places, I think they've been trying to get them for years. Because if you do the math, annualized over a year, what they charge is like hundreds of percent. So, all right? So usury is the illegal charging of too much interest. But guess what? The usury law is exempt for mortgages. <laughs> yes. Federally exempt for the use of mortgages. <laughs> let's make a law that says you can't charge too much interest rate. Then let's exempt the one thing that most people borrow money on. No, because the free market kind of does that. Now, I'm not, not telling you that there aren't guys out there I know right now that are charging 9 and 10%. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for. How quick can I get the money? How long do I need the money? How bad's my credit? Things like that. Nope. FHA, USDA do not stipulate what the interest is. We'll talk about FHA in depth coming up. Now, up until now, we need to talk, we've been talking about lenders, and you guys all assume something. Let me be the first to break your bubble. There is no Santa Claus, and banks have no money. <laughs> all right? Banks do not have money. Investors in the banks have money. Right? 
Do you guys all remember Jed Clampett, the Beverly Hillbillies? The series about the hillbilly guy that found the oil and they moved to Beverly Hills and it was a comedy. You don't know how close that's right. You know how often Mr. Drysdale was kissing Jed Clampett's butt and making him happy. Why? Because it's Jed Clampett's money that the bank's lending out, not the banks. Banks don't have money. Banks are educated in ways to assess a person's risk, but they don't use their money. They use an investor's money, like Jed Clampett. That's why they wanted to keep him happy, because he's got so many hundred million in the bank. BlackRock, the Teachers Credit Union, um, Greystock, Greystoke, all of those big lenders are the money, all right? They are the money. So banks only make money in a couple different ways. The first way they make money is this thing called a loan origination fee. A loan origination fee. It is a fee that is exactly what it sounds like it is. It's a fee to originate, which means to start, a loan. When you walk into Fifth Third and you go, hey, I want to get a home loan, the guy goes, sure, step into my cubicle, and he gets out the piece of paper and he starts writing. Somebody's got to pay him. That's a loan origination fee. That loan origination fee is expressed in what we call points. They'll tell you our fee is one point, one and a half points, two points. What a point is, is 1% of the loan. 1% of the loan. So if I go in and say, hey, I'm buying that $100,000 house we talked about, and I want an 80% LTV, and the lender says, hey, no problem. We're going to charge you two points to do this loan. How many loan origination, what's the amount of money the loan origination fee is going to cost? It's two points of the loan amount. Think about this if you can't remember. Here's the easy way to remember it. They don't care what you pay. All they care about is their money. So if you buy a $100,000 house, at an $80,000 or an 80% 80 LTV, they are loaning you 80 grand. They're going to charge you two points on their money. So 2% of 80,000 is $1,600. That's how much you pay to get that loan. So that's one way banks make money, through a loan origination fee. The second way that a bank can make money is this thing called a discount point. A discount point. Now, discount points are kind of hard to understand, so there's one easy way to think of it. It's kind of like prepaying the interest. Legal, virtually what it is, it's the difference between what Clampett wanted for his money and what Drysdale can actually lend it out at. BlackRock gives the bank 300 million and says we want 2%, and the bank says we can only loan it out at one and a half because that's what the market is. Who's making up that other half a point? Discount point, the borrower, all right? It's the same concept. If the guy says, oh, along with our loan origination fee, we also charge two discount points, how much would they be paying in discount points? Same math. I picked it that way. Still 80 grand loan, 2% would be another $1,600. So you're paying $1,600 in loan origination fees, and you're paying $1,600 in discount points. Or if you want to do it a different way, how many points was the loan origination fee? Two. And how many points was the discount? Two. Two plus two is four. What's four percent of 80 grand? 3,200. Same as 1,600 plus 1,600. 
So you can add those up when doing the math, hint, hint, because a percent is a unitless number. So you can add your loan origination fee to your discount points to figure them up. So if they say we're charging you a half a point origination and half a point discount, you go, oh, well, half and a half's one. I'm paying one total point in fees. I'm going to change the audio because it's long, but we're not done with this slide. 